It's time for the musical elements and Mr. Sorrell's elements and music with Mr. Sorrell's musical elements and Mr. Sorrell's elements and music with Mr. Sorrell's. So glad you are here with me. Musical elements of Mr. Sorrell's, learning about the different elements of music, notation, the rhythm notes, different parts of the staff, and letter names. It is all great, all good stuff as Mr. Barr, Ms. Shermer, Ms. Chavez, and I continue to teach and encourage you to learn about the different elements of music. And of course, I've got my wonderful dry erase board here which I enjoy so much, and some new Expo marker colors. I have Expo Perfect Purple. I have Expo Gretsch Orange, or you could say Sunset Orange, or you might sell it, say Sunrise Orange. And I also have Brown, Expo Brown. Expo Brown is out of town. Mmm, wonderful colors. Nice colors, along with my black Expo marker, my red Expo marker, and of course my blue Expo marker. So let's get started with the elements of music of Mr. Cyril's. For the past couple weeks, actually about two and a half months, we've been looking at the staff, and we know that the staff have lines that run horizontally across, right? Left to right, right to left. And that the staff has one, two, three, four, five lines and one, two, three, four spaces. Well, technically, you count this as a zero space. One, two, three, four, five. All right? And let's talk about this symbol over here. What symbol is that? I'd say guess that symbol. We don't guess in music. All right? What is this symbol over here? And if you said treble clef, ding, 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 you are correct. That is a treble clef. Very good, kids. Very good. Who uses the treble clef staff? Why, the trumpet, the clarinet, the flute, the violin, um, the right hand in the piano, upper voices and singing, soprano, alto. So they use the treble clef staff to put their notes and their notation on. All right, how about this one here in blue, below the treble clef staff? That is called the, uh, if you said bass clef, Ding, 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 you are correct. Bass clef, and that's your lower notes, like your cello, your double bass, bass guitar, bassoon, contra bassoon, trombone, tuba, and timpani. And your left hand on your piano. And your bass and your tenor, a lot of times in your, uh, for your, like, choirs. Okay, and piano, again, right hand would put treble clef, left hand would be the bass clef. We've got two hands to put it together. Okay, got the bass clef. Now, when you take a treble clef and a bass clef and you bracket them together, that is called the ding, 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 grand staff. Not just huge staff, not just big staff, but the grand staff. Well, today we want to focus on, again, on this number right here. 4-4 four, four here. And the 4-4 four, four here, that is called a donkey? No, it's called a time signature. And if you said time signature, ding, 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 you are correct. What do those numbers mean? Well, the top number, the 4, 4, top number is how many beats in a measure? Let me say that again. How many beats in a measure? If it's a four, that means that there's four beats in a measure. If that were four were a three, it would be three beats in a measure. So that tells you, that gives you the guideline, how many beats in the measure, it tells you that. You have to follow that guideline. Very important. You have to have four beats in a measure. That's the rule. That's what it's telling us to do. How about the bottom number? This is a four. In this case, which note gets one beat? Which note gets one beat? And we'll talk about that. That's a four. What does that mean? Well, let's back this train up a little bit and look at the first one. How many beats in measure? Which begs the question, what is a measure? Well, a measure is the space between bar lines. A measure is the space between bar lines, which begs the question, what is a bar line? All right, let's look at that. Bar lines are vertical lines that divide music into sections. 
vertical lines going up and down, horizontal lines across. And uh, bar lines, vertical lines, divide music into sections. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to divide the music into little sections using my purple marker. Perfect purple. All right, we're going to do this randomly. So I'm going to say from here to here. Okay, I've got a bar line. Just going to draw them in in random places, and then we're going to fill in the notes accordingly. All right, so I put in several bar lines. So, I put in one here, one section here, and here. So, a measure is that distance between each bar line. So, this from here to here is measure one. Okay, measure one. From this bar line to this bar line is measure two. It's that space. From this bar line to this bar line is measure three. And from this bar line to this bar line is measure four. Take note that we have two bar lines at the end. That is called a double bar. Double bar line, which means it's the end. E-N-D, right? Nothing here but space. That means it's the end. That means it's done. So at the end of the day, technically you could say double bar. And that means the end. Okay, so let's go on from here. We got bar lines, we got measures, and we're gonna go on from here. Yeah, so the joke of the day, the joke of the day, it's time for the joke of the day, the joke of the day, the joke of the day, it's time for the joke of the day, joke of the day, joke of the day, it's time for the joke of the day. Here is the joke of the day. What instrument did the musician use to catch butterflies? What instrument did the musician use to catch butterflies? Why, he used a clarinet. He used a clarinet to catch butterflies. Clarinet. <laughs> Maybe he caught them in the bell. I don't know, it flew in right here and then he played and the bug went in his mouth. That would be gross, wouldn't it? So I always got to check your clarinet. Make sure there's nothing in it. You got to clean it all the time. Keep it clean. Right? So, the musician used a clarinet. I <laughs> said that to laugh. To catch a butterfly. Pretty cool. That was a good joke. I thought it was funny. So that is the joke of the day. The joke of the day. That was the joke of the day. Okay. Back to our instruction. Here we go. Top number. How many beats in a measure? This says four. So it's four beats in a measure. Now, what gets one beat? A quarter gets, gets one beat. Right? Because we got a four down here. Four here. The bottom number, which note gets one beat? That is a four. There's the four. The quarter note gets one beat. So how many beats can we put into a measure? How many quarter notes can we put into a measure? Well, if you answered four, ding, 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 ding. You are correct. Let's just do it. Let's put it in random spots. Okay. Got a quarter note here. That's one beat. And a quarter note here. That is another beat. It's two beats. I'm putting a one below it. I'm putting them in random spots as long as I put four beats in. One plus one plus one plus one equals four. We're good to go. That's measure one. We have obeyed the rules of the time signature. How about the next one? Let's find out we can mix it up a little bit. Let's see. Well, half note is two beats. How many half notes can we put in that measure? Well, two beats, two plus two equals four. We can put two in. Let's do it. I'll put one right here. Okay, I get the stem going down and one up here. Let's see. Two beats, two plus two equals four. We are good to go, Fred. Let's keep going. So, what would be the easiest way to do this? Is there anything that just adds up to four? Well, right, let's see. A whole note adds up to four beats. We can put one whole note right here. And that'll cover that. How about that? That's four beats. We're good to go. Let's make the last one just a little more challenging. Let's mix it up. We'll put this in here. I'm just going to put it in and see where we go with this. Okay? Let's see if we got a quarter note, and then we have this. We haven't talked about that yet, have we? Well, let's take a look at it. Those are called eighth notes. 
and one eighth note gets a half beat. Now, usually for your, you kids at this level, we start with two eighth notes. It's just, just a little more symmetrical and easy to understand. So, two eighth notes, each one gets a half a beat, that's one beat. That's just a little easier, and it goes by real quick. You say T T for the half note. So, we've got two half notes here. Each one gets a half beat that adds up to one beat with both of them. Okay? I know I'm going kind of quick here, but I want to make this one just a little bit shorter. Finally, we have our half note with two beats. So we add them together as four. So we'll be good to go. Oh, we got four here. Four, 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 four. We are good. Now, can we clap out this rhythm to verify? Yes, I think we can. So let's say it first. We got a quarter, 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 half note, half note, whole note, quarter. Eighth note, half note, okay? Say that again, a little quicker. Quarter, 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 quarter. Half note, half note, whole note, quarter, eighth note, half note. Come and clap it out. Real slow. Ready? Begin. Quarter, 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 quarter. That's four. Half note. Half note, whole note, quarter, eighth note, half note. Or you can use the ta ah method, which is pretty cool. Here we go. Quarter note gets a ta, half note ta ah, four ta ah 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 ahs for a whole note, and we say tt for the eighth notes to break it up a little bit. Here we go. Ready? Begin. Ta ta ta. Ta ah ta ah. Here we go four. Ta ah ah ah. Ta ti ti ta ah. All right. So those are the rhythm notes. I did review all these because we've been doing them. So I just introduced the eighth notes and hope you can follow along. You kids are doing pretty good. So I think you're fine. So, for the letter names on the staff, in other words, what notes we're playing. So, the rhythm is a duration, how long you hold a note for, okay, either short or long. And um, in musical alphabet, what note you're playing tells you whether you're playing high or low, or what note you're playing on the piano or guitar. So, let's review that, because that's fun to do. What color should I do? Let's see, I haven't used orange yet, but I might just use red for the letter names, okay? Now where should I put the letter names? They got nice big space right here. Speaking of space, we're going to start with the spaces. What's the word in the spaces rhymes with space? The four spaces. Mr. Sorrells has a big nose. You said it again. No. He's got a face. F-A-C-E. That's right. Good job. F-A-C-E. Now, if you add space 5 and 0 space, remember that funny thing I had? That's right, defaseg. I'm going to erase this 4 right here. Defaseg, defaseg, defaseg. Oh, I like to say that. D-F-A-C-E-G, defaseg. How about the lines? What was the fun saying we had for the lines? If you said E, Jibbity, F, you are absolutely correct. With that being said, let's go ahead and we're not going to guess the letter names. We are going to we're going to label the letters, okay? First one, line number two. If you said G, ding, 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 you are correct. G, space number one, two, F. A, good, line number one, two, three is a B, good for you, and guess what, that's the same place, so that's, that's a B, and this is a B, space number one, two, three, F, A, C, so far, so good, great job, kid. And line number one, two, three, four, which is a donkey D. Good for you. I love donkey D. You always get a good yee out of it. 
If that's a D, then this is a D. Good for you. All right, let's move over here. If that's a D, that's a D, then this is a D. Lots of donkey Ds around here. Three yeehaws. All right, this is four just because it's in the way. We drop down to here, space number one, two, three, which is a C, C, and finally, space number one, two, which is an A. So there you have it. I went to kind of quick with that. But you kids are so smart out there. You're getting this down so well. And we appreciate you answering the exit tickets. And again, we're putting this together because you just need to have good knowledge of this. Also, we are encouraging all of you fifth graders and sixth graders out there to sign up for an instrument next year. Sign up, sign up for music. Sign up for an instrument or for a choir next year. We want you to do that. We're hoping this will give you a good review and a, and a good foundation to play music because music is so great and fun and enjoyable. You have great teachers at intermediate level and you learn, you uh, make a lot of new friends in instrumental classes and in choir. So sign up for music. And this has been Elements of Music with Mr. Sorrell's Musical Elements of Mr. Sorrell's Elements of Music with Mr. Sorrell's Musical Elements of Mr. Sorrell's This is number 11. I thank you for joining me. And bye, everyone. See you soon. Take care.